What up, what up? Wimbush here, and today I'm excited to show you guys how I made this Mix Master Mic hologram for our virtual reality project called the Moonbase Invasion. Now, we use this plugin from Metal called Freeform Pro. Hey yo, what up? Mix Master Mike here, and um, be on the lookout. My boy Jonathan Wimbush is gonna let you in on his secret on how he built those uh, holograms on Moonbase, on the Moonbase Invasion. So. Stay locked on his Instagram feed at Jonathan Winbush for the secrets on the Moon Base Invasion secret hologram. All right, speak to Master Mike and I'm out. Peace. Big shout out to Mixmaster Mike. Thank you for coming through on that intro. Shout out to Copeland Entertainment. And um, yeah, like Mike said, we're going to show you some secrets to the 360 VR project we did a few years ago called the Moonbase Invasion, which you can find on my YouTube page. I uploaded it recently. But if I scroll through here a little bit, you can see after Mike activates this little monitor here, on the left hand side, if you have a VR headset on or if you're looking through your desktop, if you turn to your left, you can actually see an holographic figure of Mixmaster Mike mixing in real time with his um, actual avatar over here. And so we wanted to bring the experience to people that really want to see how Mike moves, how fast he moves here. And so I decided to create like a hologram to have up on a monitor beside you so you can kind of see up close and personal, but still get this kind of cool effect at the same time. And so I'm gonna show you how to make this hologram and actually make it audio reactive using Free4 Pro. And so without further ado, let's just jump right into it. So let me pause this video, shrink this down here. And as you can see, I already have a scene set up. So this is 1920 by 1080, and then the 60 frames per second, because that's what we film Mike at. And if I hit my RAM preview, you can kind of see the footage that I'm working with. So this was shot on the red camera on green screen. I already keyed everything out, so we have an alpha channel there. So if I solo out Mike's layer, you can see we have an alpha behind him. And then all I did was put a gray solid behind there so that we actually had something, just the reference behind them because we're gonna make a holographic so it's gonna be see-through. And then down here on this very bottom layer, this is actually the audio mix that we used for the Moonbase Invasion because everything is audio reactive and so we need the WAV file in there as well or an MP3, whatever you decide to use. And so we're gonna get started by, I'm gonna actually duplicate my main layer here. So I'm gonna hit Control D on my keyboard and then I'm just gonna close this one out. I'm gonna click the eyeball here and just drag this to the bottom. I just wanna keep this here as like my, um, I guess my fresh layer that no effects are gonna be applied to. And so I'm gonna go back to my duplicated layer here and I'm gonna go over to effects and presets. And if I zoom in here, you can see I'm actually going to type in hue for hue and saturation. I'm gonna drag that over here and then I'm just gonna bring the saturation all the way down so that Mike is in the black and white and grayscale here on my layer. And then I wanna make this into a pre-comp so that we can use this for displacement later on. So I'm gonna right click on my layer here and then I'm gonna go over to pre-comp. I'm actually gonna rename this just Mixmaster Mike BW for black and white. And um, yeah, I'll just leave it like that. And so I want to move all my attributes into new composition here because I have a hue and saturation effect on there. So let me click OK. And so now I have a pre-comp here with everything the black and white on there. And so now I can use this to drive Free4 Pro by middle, which we're going to use to bring out some of the audio, re the audio reactivity. And so if I go over here to my effects and presets, just type in Freeform. And we have Metal Freeform Pro, which if you go to the Metal website, you can download a trial as well if you want to follow along. So let me go over here, bring in my Freeform Pro. Let me drag this down here. And as you can see here on the right hand side, let me bring this in a little bit. You can see we have an area down here called Primitives. So I'm going to click this. And then for my render primitives, I'm going to actually click Q. And this is where, if I zoom back out, you can see... We're starting to get displacement on mic, but it doesn't look too good. So actually, let me go to my display grid. I'm gonna turn this off, and this is gonna turn off the yellow lines here. 
so I don't really need that. And then for my primitive scale, let me go like six by six by six. And just for a quick tip, if you like, if you're in your attributes panel here and you click on and activate, if you hit the tab key, you'll actually move down to the next attribute there. So that's what I usually do. Just a quick tip there for you guys. Actually, let me make this eight by eight by eight for the X, Y, and Z permanent scale. So now you can see we have these in actual 3D cubes here. So if I go and I rotate these, you can actually see these are rotating. So let me zoom in here a little bit more. You can see we have rotating cubes here. And if I go down to, let's say, randomize rotation, this will, this will um, rotate everything randomly. So if I turn on this, you can actually see it really good in here. But if I turn on this, you can see the three-dimensional cubes rotating all randomized. Which if you wanted to, we could hook this up to the audio layer, which I'll show you how to do here in a minute. And have that like all be driven by the audio. So let me zoom out here. Actually, let me go full screen up to 100%. Okay, there we go. And so my next step is I'm going to come down here to my audio layer. And I'm going to right click. And I'm going to come over to what is it, keyframe assistant. And we can actually convert audio to keyframes. So if I click this, you'll see we have like this, um, we have this adjustment layer that pops up. And if I hit U on my keyboard, you can see it's actually giving us keyframes for everything here. And so I only want to use the one that has both channels. I mean, you have the option to use the, just the left channel or just the right if you want. But just to simplify it, I'm going to use the one that just has both channels. And I'm actually click U twice on here just to bring up the keyframes just for that. Just to kind of organize it down here in the timeline a little bit. And so now the next step is I'm going to actually want to try to drive some of this animation with this audio file. So if I go back and click on my pre-comp here that I made my cubes with, and then if I go under, let's say displacement mapping, and for my displacement layer, I'm gonna go and click the one that I made, my Mix Master mic black and white. Let me click on that. And actually, cause we're gonna do this a couple of times. And so down here, I'm gonna click enter. And so it says Mix Master mic BW, and I'm gonna do underscore cube displacement and that's just so I know that this is going to be my cube displacement layer you can name it anything you want but that's just going to help me know what this exact layer is and so if I go under my displacement um, uh, my displacement height and if I move this up you can actually see these cubes starting to come to us in Z space and then if I go in negative you can see them going back and you can tell the black ones, since they're black, they're not going to move at all. And this is all driven by the displacement grayscale. So the wider the area, the, or the closer it's going to get to us. And then as it goes all the way down to black, it's not going to react at all. So I want to have this driven by my audio. So let me click zero on this. And then I'm going to actually click on here and make a keyframe. And now if I go back down to my timeline and I hit U, now I see my keyframe that I have for my displacement height. And so I'm gonna hold down the Alt key on my keyboard and click on this stopwatch here. And you can see now our numbers turned red and it also came up with this, um, this programming um, scripting language down here, which we don't really have to script anything. We can have it all driven automatically. And so if I come over here to my pick whip and then I click and drag this up to my slider here, now everything's going to be and then i click off of it everything's going to be driven by this audio channel that i made so if you look as i scroll through my timeline the numbers are pretty much coinciding with the numbers up here and then if you look inside of our our um, preview window here you could kind of see it moving but not too much and that's because our numbers down here are pretty low so we can fix that by if i click on my slider here and then I come over to my graph editor. Let me click that. And then you see all of our frames down here. And let me zoom in a little bit. And so you can see all of our frames down here. We can um, actually drag these up to kind of exaggerate them. And so if I click on this right here, you have to wait till your arrow turns into an up and down key. 
and then I could drag these up to kind of amplify what's going on. So I'm just going to drag it all the way up. And then now let's zoom out and kind of see what's happening. So now you can see our cubes are moving to the audio and it's a little bit more definitive. We can actually see the cubes moving. And if we want to make this even more dramatic, move this up a little bit more. And now we really have the cubes moving at us. And if you come down to here and you don't see this, that's because you actually have to select, let me zoom in down here so you guys can see it. But if you go next to the eyeball and go to this, um, let me see what it's called. It's called choose graph type and options. So if I click on this, you wanna make sure that you have edit value graph check mark because if you have edit speed graph check mark, you'll just get this and you won't be able to manipulate the keyframes at all. So that's very important. You'll wanna have edit value graph here. And now you can manipulate the keyframes as you see fit. So now we have these audio cubes driven. They look pretty cool. So let me go down here. I'm gonna click these, get back to my keyframes like so. All right, so now I'm gonna go back to my Mix Master Mic Cube displacement. I'm gonna hit Control D on the keyboard to make a duplicate. And then I'm gonna name this one Cube because I wanna have cubes on here that actually aren't audio reactive. I just wanna have them kind of sitting in place just to kind of get the outline of mic. So I'm gonna come over to my Freeform Pro. I'm gonna click Reset to reset everything. And then I'm gonna come down to my displacement mapping you can see that we still have our keyframe here even though we hit reset. So I'm gonna hold down the Alt key and click the stopwatch. And then I'm gonna click the stopwatch again without holding down the Alt key. And we have everything reset there as well. And then I wanna come down to my display grid. I'm gonna turn this off. And then I'm gonna come down to my primitives and go to render primitives again. And I'm gonna click cube. But we have a whole bunch of de um, other options here as well, but I'm gonna stick with cubes. And then for my primitive scale for this one, I'm gonna just go like 10 by 10 by 10. And then for my primitive grid, let's take these up to like 200 by 200. Actually, let me bring my cubes down. Let's see what three by three by three looks like. Yeah. Okay, so my primitive X and Y, maybe 100 by 100. Okay, there we go. So something like that looks pretty cool. And if I want, I can even bring these up to like 150 by 150, depending on how much definition you want of your character in here. But I'm actually going to bring in a little bit more definition with like a wireframe. So again, I'm going to click on my cube link here down to my timeline. I'm going to hit Control D. And let me actually name this one wireframe. Then I'm going to come back over to Freeform Pro. Click Reset. And then this time, I'm actually, okay, so let me clip my display grid, turn that off again. Okay, so this time I'm gonna to go to my render option and under render mode, we can actually click on wireframe. So now we have a wireframe of Mike. If I solo this out with just the background, you can see that we have like this cool wireframe. And if we move, you can see he's as a wireframe. And so that looks pretty neat there too. And so let me drag this one, the wireframe all the way down to the bottom. And now we wanna kinda of add some color so that it looks a little bit more holographic. So I'm actually gonna solo out my gray background and my wireframe. Then I'm gonna close this a little bit, come back over to my fix and presets and type in tri. Actually, I'm gonna type in tritone and go to color correction tritone. And it automatically comes up with this brown but instead of brown, let's click like a blue color that looks a little bit more holographic, somewhere around there. Then I'm gonna come over and type in glow. And I'm just gonna use the standard After Effects stylized glow and drag this over. So now if I look on my viewport, you can see that we're starting to get some glow accentings like the really hot points in here. Mike's starting to look a little bit more holographic and we're gonna actually do these to the other ones as well. So if I copy these two, if I go to my tritone and glow, hold down the shift to select them, hit Control C, 
I want to do it to my displacement cube and my other cube as well. So I'm going to paste it on my other two layers here. And now we're starting to get a little bit more of a holographic look. And I can actually come over to like my midtones, drag these over a little bit, just to add a little bit of variety. And then I go to my displacement cubes, same thing. And we see what they look like when they bust out. Okay, so I come back, just play around with my color a little bit, make it a little bit more interesting. So if I come closer to the whites, you can really see the glows are starting to pop a little bit more here. So I'm gonna do the same thing in the cube, bring it closer to the white so the, the glows really start to pop out here. And then I'm actually going to take my wireframe and I'm gonna come down here into my mode and I'm gonna click where we at, let's go to screen. And I'm gonna actually do that for all my layers here. I'm just gonna screen out the blacks. Like so. So now, whenever we're playing, we could kind of see Mike's shirt and we could kind of see the vinyls, but it's more about like the, the detail like on his arms and his face and some of the chrome on his mixer and turntables here. And so we wanna kind of bring Mike a little bit more into it so we can actually tell it's him. So like if you look, we can kind of see an accent of his face, but it's really, really hard to tell who he is. So I'm gonna come back down to my original layer, hit Control D. And let's drag this all the way up to the top and turn this back on. Like so. Okay, so I wanna add a tritone to this as well. So we're gonna make him look a little bit more holographic. Switch up the colors here a little bit. Something like that. Let me see what happens if I go to the whites. Nothing too much. I'll just leave it here at blue. Then we add a glow to it again. Like so. And actually go down to the glow intensity. Just turn it down just a tad bit. And then to really sell it, we want to add some scan lines, which we can use Venetian blinds in After Effects. So if I come over here to the right, type in VN, I get Venetian blinds here. I'm going to drag this over. And for my direction, I kind of want to make this, I want to make them horizontal. So I'm going to click on 90 for the direction. Then the completion, if I look here, oops, if I look here on the left hand side, Let's make it so that they're super thin. And then for the width, let's bring these all the way down. I think 10 looks about good. Somewhere around there. And actually for completion, we could bring it up a tad bit more. So somewhere around there looks pretty good. And if I solo this out, you can see we're getting these scan lines in here that look pretty cool on there. So now let's add like a flicker effect. So if I come down to my layer, hit T for opacity, I'm gonna just keyframe, hold down shift, page down. Then I'm just gonna pick a random number and I'm just gonna keep doing this because I'm actually gonna do this manually. Like there's plugins you could get to do flickers, but if you don't have any plugins that will do a flicker, you could just do it manually like this. So I'm just going high, low, so now I'm at 100 and bring this back down to 45, and then bring this up to like 85, and then come back down to like 25. And I'm just making a whole bunch of random keyframes here, down to 10. And so I have like a good amount of keyframes here. And so I'm gonna select these keyframes, and I'm gonna right click, and then I'm gonna go to toggle, toggle hold frame. And as you can see, it gives us like this flicker effect. So if I go and do a RAM preview, we get like this flickering effect in here. We can make it happen more often, but um, first let me make a whole bunch more of these keyframes. And I'm gonna do is copy and paste these keyframes. So I'm gonna go to the end here, hold down shift, hit page down, and then I'm gonna copy all these keyframes, hit control C, then hit control V. 
and then same thing I'm gonna grab all these keyframes hit control C hit control V and I'm just gonna keep doing this a few times until I have a whole bunch of keyframes here because you'll see what I want to do here in a second let me do it one more time so I actually select all of these hit control C then control V and now I have a whole bunch of keyframes which if I select all of these and then hold down the alt key and grab the one at the very end here on the right hand side I could drag these all together and it's going to scrunch all these keyframes together so now if I do a RAM preview you can see we're getting a little bit more flicker in there and it's acting a little bit more um, it's more consistent let me hit it so this is running in real time here so this is where our flickering effect is going to look like and like I said you could get plugins that will do this but if you want to do it manually it's just quick and easy just to do it that way as well so I'm going to unsolo these out then I'm going to bring this down to let's say right above the wireframe and I'm going to actually screen this out as well now let's see what happens if I do a RAM preview okay so I have a good 10 seconds here for you guys let me come over and hit the tilde key to bring this up full screen. Let's hit the RAM preview. We can actually see everything running in real time now, 60 frames per second. You can see the details in Mike's face here. You can see his eyes even. And we can see all the cubes are acting to the audio as he's scratching. We can see the highs really exaggerating the cubes and bringing them to the viewer here. And if we bring this up with our, um, actually let me stop this. And let me bring over our reference of the Moonbase Invasion you can see that is basically the same concept here we have everything reacting to the audio i took it a step further i have his logo behind him acting to the um, audio as well as his spectrum over here and so that's just the basic gist of how the moon base invasion hologram was built so hopefully that helped you guys out like i said you could go to the metal website you can download a free trial of the plugin, and if you like it, type in keyword Wimbush, and you'll get a special discount off for the full price. Once again, thank you to Mixmaster Mike. Shout out to Copeland Entertainment, and keep creating. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Make sure you click that subscribe as well. <laughs>